Hello Octalysis Primers. Today we're going to talk about happiness, depression, and suicide. This stems from a very interesting Octalysis Prime conversation in the Slack group where we noted that statistics can often be misleading. For instance, if you look at uh, Denmark, Denmark from all the numbers is known as one of the happiest countries in the world. And the way they do that is they ask people about, oh, where do you want to be in your life? Compare that to where, where are you right now, in your quality of life, and all these things. So out of all these questions, Denmark ranked really, really high on this. However, Denmark also has one of the highest suicide rates. So how does that make any sense? This is a really strange phenomenon. This goes back to my study of happiness, right? I talk often about how happiness is literally based on your expectations. So if you can meet or exceed your expectations, you're happy. If you fall below your expectations, you are sad. For instance, a person living in the wilderness of Africa cannot even begin to comprehend why someone in the US would become depressed for two weeks when they get a C on a test, right? It's like, whoa, I just want to get food and if I get food, I'm happy. You you get to have an education and you know, you pass the class, right? Why are you so depressed? There's an expectation, the student thinks he or she's an A student and when, that, when he or she gets a C, he or she gets upset. And so yeah, if you're a C student, if you get a B, you're ecstatic. But if you are an A student and you get a B, you're really, really sad. I remember uh, back in high school, uh, there were, after the finals exam, so, uh, someone walked up to the teacher and he's like, I want to check my final grade. And she looked at its grade and she was just so sad. And she said, I'm so sorry, you have a 89.46. And you know, as, as once you get to 89.5, you get up to 90, and that's an A. And so she was like, I'm so sorry, you know, you, you almost made it to an A, you fell slightly below the mark. And the guy responded, wait, so that means I have a B? And she's like, yes, I'm very sorry. I like, yeah, I got a B, I got a B. And he just ran around, he was so happy, he was telling everyone he got a B, and the teacher was like, oh, that's good, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy too. You know, and literally he, met and exceeded his expectations. He felt like B was a really good grade, whereas when I get a B, my parents go berserk on me, you know, so uh, and this could be a little bit of a cultural thing. Denmark's situation is, so I studied a bit more about suicide, and there is a professor, a scholar, who spent 20 plus years of a life researching about uh, suicide. And after so much study, so much intensive research, he says it is quite inconclusive what makes people commit suicide. The only reliable data set is that people commit suicide when there's nothing left to blame. So if people can say, oh, the economy is bad, that's why I'm miserable, they don't commit suicide. If they say, oh, it's the government, oh, it's, it's my boss, oh, it's my ex that screwed me over, as long as they have something to blame, they have a lot less chance of committing suicide. But when there's nothing else to blame, that's when they look around and they think, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I cannot solve that problem, right? Because if there's something else, that means things could change. But if it's you, that's the problem, then you can't change anything. And as a result, you choose to end your life. So regarding why so many people commit suicide in Denmark, there's a few different theories out there. The first one is somewhat uh, somewhat of a satire, like dark comedy reason. And the reason is that because all the depressed people or the sad people already committed suicide, so they don't get to go and take the happiness survey. And uh, you know, potentially that could be the case. Uh, the other explanation that's a little bit more realistic is that the happiness surveys are always taken in spring or summer, whereas the depressions happen in winter. And in, in Denmark, the winters are long, you know, the days are short, there's a lot of sunlight, and it's very cold, so people choose to uh, commit suicide. But then, there's a third reason, which I believe I am the most subscribed to right now. I believe in that reason the most. If you think of someone from Denmark, they, they look around and every research, every paper, everything says that, hey, you're supposed to be happy. Every around you is happy. And they're like, yeah, I know I'm supposed to be happy, but 
I just don't feel happy. Maybe I'm the problem. Maybe there's something wrong with me. And I believe that is why it contributes to uh, a high suicide rate in Denmark. So with that understanding, I personally feel like the best way to handle happiness and the motto I live by is aim high, expect low. So the thing is we determine that happiness is determined by our expectations, right? So if we expect a lot and we don't reach that level, then we're pretty sad. But if we expect very little, then anything we get, we're really, really happy. Now the one limitation about expecting low is that maybe we just don't try as hard because we don't expect anything. And that's why the other part of aim high, expect low is to aim high. You always need to strive for the highest goal you can achieve. So your rational target is strong. It's a lot of core drive to development accomplishment. But then, you know, you, you expect low. Whatever you get, you're happy. So this is like an attitude of playing a game. But when you first play a game, you're obviously aiming high, right? You want to do the best you can. You want to strive for great goals. You want to do something epic. But you kind of expect low because you just start playing. You don't know what's going to happen. You might die. You know? And so when you, when you die, you feel okay. It's like, hey, let me try again. Let me have more fun. So based on all the things we understand about happiness, expectations, about motivation, I believe it's a good principle to live by the motto, aim high, expect low. So I want you to think about how are you aiming high? How are you trying to strive for more in your life? But also are you moderating your expectations, your emotions to expect low so that anything you get, you enjoy it. The journey is what matters. Doing these things, going on this adventure, it's already worth it. All right, with that, I will see you guys next time. Prime on!